exercise is really important. You know, during a shuttle mission, maybe not so much because it's very short term and it can actually cause you more stress because you have to stop what you're doing in order to go exercise. But on station, it's key, not only physiologically, but psycho you know, psychologically. And uh, it was something that's, of course, very important to me. But it also, you have to approach it right because it can be very inefficient. Actually, everything in, that you do in space is more inefficient in some ways than doing it on earth, you know, to, to exercise, we have two hours a day of exercise. What I tried to do was do it all back to back in the morning to make it as efficient as possible. Cause that's sort of a driver for my life for some reason. But, um, so I'd get up, we have a weight, we have a weight lifting exercise machine, if you will. It's a resistive exercise device that simulates weight lifting. And that's pretty easy to set up. It's isolated from the structure. There's a checklist you have to go through to set it up and make sure that all of the parameters are appropriate, that you are isolated, that it's operating appropriately. You put your tennis shoes on because you really can't use it barefoot. It's a little bit dangerous, although some people do, but definitely not in socks. And then you start going through your exercise routine. And it takes about an hour to do all of that if you're doing the appropriate uh, exercises. And there's programs that the ground sends you to make sure that you're, fun you're, you're hitting every muscle and major muscle system in your body to, to exercise it and, and dynamically load it the way you need to. And then, you, you know, then you got a checklist, shut the machine off and safe it and put it in the configuration it needs to be for kind of quiescent mode. And so if your exercise periods are separated, then you have to clean up, which takes some time and then go back to work. And then for your next exercise period, which is going to be a cardio, then you got to change again and then set up the next piece of equipment. And so we have a treadmill. And then we have a bicycle ergometer that we use to do cardio with on the station. And so for the treadmill, you have to put your harness on. And I remember when I first arrived on station, uh, and this is the kind of knowledge that gets handed over on station that you can't capture in training easily. And there's a lot of that. We can talk about the whole handover process. But um, I tried on my harness and I put on the bungee cords to bungee myself to the treadmill. And I ran for about five minutes and I had this excruciating pain in my back. And it's because the harness didn't fit right. And it was just off a little bit. It's sort of like a backpacking harness. You know, if you don't have your backpack fit quite right, it either loads your shoulders more, it loads your hip more, or it puts the load in weird places in your body. And that harness had to be fit exactly right, or you wouldn't get the loading that you were going to need in order to be able to run for some time on the treadmill. And I learned that because Greg Shamatov, who was handing over to me, he was leaving as I was coming, said, okay, you know, take your time with this. Even if you just have to adjust it a millimeter, adjust it because it's going to be okay once you get it fit. And if he wouldn't have told me that, I could have tried it once or twice, had this excruciating pain, and then not wanted to run, which would have been a real big problem for me psychologically. So there's all this little bit of knowledge that gets handed over that the training community doesn't even know about, but that's another topic. So on the treadmill, I found it very relaxing to listen to the news from the day. You know, we get the news shipped up. So that was sort of my moment where mentally I was actually de-stressing myself and also emotionally connecting with the ground because I was listening to the news. Physiologically, it was very good for me because it's dynamic loading. It's loading your body in a way that the resistive exercise device couldn't. You know, the pounding of each step on the treadmill, I could adjust my stance and make sure I was pounding that load more into my hips or pounding that load more into my ankles. So that, and it felt really good to have that physical exertion because it's very effortless physically to live in space. You're really not using your body much at all. So to have a moment where you feel like you're really working your body out is, is very satisfying. And then the bicycle ergometer, the value that you get from something like that is you can actually work out your heart very strongly. On the treadmill, you're kind of in plod mode. It had certain speed limitations, so you couldn't really get a good you know, blood flow kind of thing going through your heart. But on the bicycle ergometer, I could pedal really hard for a few minutes and really feel my heart pumping and really feel it, you know, putting the blood through my body and really getting my cardio system a, a strong workout. You know, then relax for a minute and pedal slower, then pump harder, you know, pedal faster. So it was a really good way to know I was exercising my system. And when I was bicycle, while I was watching the bicycle ergometer, I had um, a TV series on that I was rewatching from my childhood. So that was kind of fun too. So it gives you a little bit of a mental break. So exercise is really important for all kinds of reasons, physiologically, psychologically, emotionally, things like that. And I think it's going to be a major component when we send crews far, far away.